I love when coaches, consultants, and professional service providers want to do big things in their business. They want to rise to the top and influence their market and the world around them. They want to have a greater impact and make a more lucrative income. Well, if this is you, welcome to Expert in You Podcast, the show where I interview other experts and coaches, consultants, so that they can share their success strategies with you. We're going to talk about marketing and how to close more sales, how to get more premium clients, and how to really build your visibility in the market and scale your business like a boss. If this is you, welcome to the show. I want to ask you to subscribe and hit the notification bell right now so you don't miss one episode. Grab your coffee and buckle up because we are ready to give it all to you to help you become the expert and get paid as the expert that you are. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Expert in You Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Carden, and I cannot wait for you to hear from my guest today. I'm super excited to interview him because he is a longtime friend. We probably both came into the coaching space, I don't know, umpteen years ago, right, Michael? Yeah, um, it feels like Yeah, that. we connected years and years ago, and I just I adore him. I think he's brilliant, and I cannot wait for you to hear some cool things that he is doing right now in his business. So, Michael Rager, welcome to my show. Thanks, Ian. I've been waiting for a long time to be a part of this, and I was watching you uh, grow this and everything you've got going. I love it. I love it all, and so thanks for having me as a guest. You are welcome. Well, even though Michael and I have done a lot of the same things, working with business owners, helping them grow their business, Michael's doing something really unique now. And it it was one of the main reasons I really want him on here because I want to dive into this strategy. He has created a lead generation strategy really for coaches that, and it's a high end lead generation strategy and it's mostly live, right? Michael, it's, it's like yeah, it's, live, it's, it's, it's a live, live event it's strategy. Live. Yes. But it's called whiteboards and whiskey. And you can tell by the name, it sounds fun, right? Yes. But the th thing I love about it is Michael is actually now franchising this strategy. And so that's what we're going to dive into is it's really about taking your expertise and what you've done that works really well and now turning it into another revenue and income stream. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what he is doing by franchising this entire model. So Michael, I can't wait to dive into this, but why don't you give everyone a little bit of your backstory, how you kind of ended up now uh, going into the franchising piece of business and yeah, let's, let's just dive in. Go ahead. Well, the, back, the back story is I started coaching. I think it was like 2011, 2000, 2010, 2011. Yeah. My son's going to be 13 this year. We started a little bit before him. You know, we came in as a employee for somebody that owned a fr action coach franchisee. Uh, so we, we came in and got, you know, learning, 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 went in and started doing some stuff with John Maxwell we got that. Uh, I think we, you and I met through the Focus, which was LPW at at one time. It came through another coaching organization. Yeah. In case you have never yeah. heard of them, but yeah. And, and you know, it just kind of went on and started building my brand and who I was. And the whiteboards and whiskey thing kind of came up from the end of the pandemic. I, I was sick of uh, sick of Zoom meetings. I still don't like doing Zoom meetings. I'd rather be in person. We are on Zoom if you're watching the video of the podcast. Go ahead. We are. We are. Um, but I prefer in person. I always have. I just think being together, being in person, um, be, being in close proximity, being able to talk and to laugh really helps build that connection. And so I've always been really good at bringing people together. And I'm like, okay, how now do I go ahead and monetize this? And one of the things that I saw is a lot of coaches and consultants, they're very good coaches and consultants. But when it comes to bringing in, as you know, high ticket, high end clients, they struggle and they, they, they don't know what to do. They've tried everything. I, I think they've gone out and you know bought every coat, every, every course and every this on how to bring people together. And I just wanted to do something that was fun. And I was I was on a call and one of my friends said, well, you like to whiteboard, you like to drink whiskey, whiteboards and whiskey. And it started, we started doing it. Catchy. It is catchy. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we started doing it. We started growing it to see how it worked. And I've got a friend who's got a very nice venue here in Houston. He's a, he owns a managed IT services company. 
And so it's kind of like party or business in the front. And in the back, he's got this really eclectic ice house in the back of his business. And so we say he's like a mullet, his business in the front, party in the rear. And we just go on, he holds some high end events. And so we started doing some things there and we just started by inviting everybody. And we found out that, okay, that was great to get some cool people there. I was bringing in too many business development people, salespeople, stuff like that, not really who I wanted. We started paring down, paring down. About 18 months ago, I spoke at a conference and I met a guy, Chris Beard. Uh, Chris is from Australia. We we were like uh, brothers from a different mother, you know, all the way around. Yeah, you know, the same thing. We love to fish. We love the cigars. We love whiskey. I mean, it couldn't be any more perfect. And we started discussing how we could build this. And so we'll start building it in Australia. We'll start, you know, continue building it here. And we just started paring it down, paring it down and putting together the system to make it happen. And all of a sudden we figured out things started getting very predictable. And, you know, as you know, as, as a coach, lead generation and business development, the more predictable it is, the easier it is. If, 100%. If, yeah. <laughs> yes. If I'm going to go spend five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars on an event, a thousand dollars on an event, I know I've got to be able to pull a client out of it. I've got to have things happen. And all of a sudden that started happening and it, it started happening really, 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 really well. And Chris has trademarked something called the accountable boardroom. So mm-hmm. it's a, just like it sounds like it's, it's a boardroom that's set up that we've got six business owners that'll sit in together. We don't like getting big 18, 19. We like to stay small and we meet with them every 90 days and work on their, their challenges. And we, but we act as their board of advisors. They come in and they run their KPIs. They come in and tell us what they did well. They tell us what they didn't do well. They tell us where they're struggling. They tell us why they're, they're, they're there. And so we just brought the whole thing in as the whiteboards and whiskey to feed our accountable boardroom. And all of a sudden it started working and it started became, becoming predictable. And, you know, now we're here and this is what's going on. We went and spent the time. We looked at uh, licensing versus franchising. You know, okay. And let's talk training. about that because yeah. I, I know you and I actually had yeah. that conversation as well, because I've done a lot of licensing programs mm-hmm. and I said, why franchising? It's a little more structured and there's a lot more legal to it, but yeah. Talk yeah. We, we went there because of the point, the point was we started talking to a lot of um, attorneys and they say a lot of people license when they should be franchising. Mm-hmm. And they just, there's, there's the rules are changing now about what's going on and how things when franchisees or licensees have complaints mm-hmm. and they come in and said, you know, for the amount of money different, it was a big CYA cut, co- you know, call. We were covering our butts. They said, if you go in and cover your butt and do the franchise, you're going to have control to the point that I'm not a huge branding guy, but I want this thing to be good and I want it to be solid. And the problem with licensing was people could take our brand and do whatever they wanted with your it. concept and your brand. We, yeah. yeah. We had no control over it that way. And we came back and said, you know, Chris and I, we really sat and talked. Is that really what we wanted? And we came back and we said, no, we, we really want to have the higher end thing going on. We wanted to be able to give some control. And so it, it was just a lot of, a lot of talking, a lot of sitting down with a lot of people and, you know, some are going, hey, go, you know, go the go the licensing way. You know, it's not going to cost you as much. But then we realized that we just didn't have the control to what we wanted and how we wanted things to work. And I know I was watching um, on Netflix, The Founder, the show about McDonald's going through. Oh, and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And watching when Ray Kroc sold out to his buddies, his golf buddies, and they started offering hot dogs and chicken and it's like, wait a minute, that's not what we right. want. That's not what we do. And I'm like, I don't want that. You know, I don't want that. But I wanted to be able to create something that was going to be easy to duplicate, uh-huh. easy to go ahead and run and give opportunities to really expand through it. And that's what we've been seeing. And uh-huh. it, it's the more we go out and we start talking to people our potential clients are coming out and saying, Hey, can you run a private white boards and whiskey event for me? Could you come out and do this? And all of a sudden more opportunities are coming up for us. 
And, you know, we, that's exactly where we're going. I've got, I've got a guy that he's a really good friend of mine. He owns a company that does 80 podcasts, but specializes in the oil and gas and energy area. And he's like, you know, we need to run whiteboards and whiskey and the accountable boardroom for oil and gas for companies that service the oil and gas companies. He said, because they won't go to, they generally don't go to mixers that are not regular networking. Well, because they're just, they get, depending on the crowd, you know, people right now, oh my God, oil and gas energy, and they just get hammered for being in there. You know, you don't care about our planet, you know, this, right. A lot of those people, you know, I know them. They're they're working on hydrogen projects. They're working on wind projects. They're they're working on some really really cool stuff. But and you have a background in that too. I do. So, I do. I was yeah. Thinking, right. I did yeah. know that about you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I spent twenty years in the industry. That's um, what I was thinking. Yeah. Building, that's cool. Building pipelines. So it 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 has. It's come in. It's really helped us. One of my my first guy that ever bought a ticket. I mean, I mean, bought a ticket and paid. $57 to come to the event, became a client. He's been a client now for 14 months. He, he He's in the, the energy business, but he's almost had a 90% increase in revenue since we've been working together. That's awesome. And, and he's, he's got an opportunity right now to do stuff with Tesla and stuff like that, where we could actually quadruple the business in the next year and a half. And cool. yeah, it's just, it's just interesting. And that's where I think it's, it's, it, really can be tailored. I've got a guy right now that's looking to come in here. He came from the junk business and recycling business and he got in a motorcycle accident. He, he just, things happened. He, he really can't run the business. He wants to get into the coaching side and we're sitting there talking, okay, how can we do this? But we could run and we do it. We've run specific whiteboards and whiskey events for, you know, Hey, here's one for just for law firms, or we're going to do one and we're just going to go. And sometimes we'll tweak our marketing to go try to bring in those people because if I could start a group, you know, like I said, that, that, that group of five or six lawyers that don't really compete or that, that, that group of bookkeepers, lawyers, CPAs are very white collar. They do that. That's great. I can bring in the oil and gas. So it gives us a lot of opportunity to, right. to, to, to tweak out, especially if somebody has got a real niche that they want to deal with. That's so cool. I love it. So what's involved in franchising, Michael? Why don't you just walk my audience through kind of the steps of doing that? Yeah, the franchise is it's really easy. It's, uh, we, we would like whoever is there to actually come to Houston and go to an event, uh, you know, come see what it's about. We like to, you know, we interview people. We want to see what their background is. We want to understand what kind of coaching uh, or training uh, knowledge they have. It's really funny that most of the people that have come to us, they don't, they, they're, they're coming out of corporate America. They've been coaching and training their whole lives, but never getting compensated for it. Right. And they want a way to go ahead and do it. So they come on through, we'd like them to come down to Houston, come to an event. We usually run our events the first Wednesday of the month. Uh, come on, see us. We have a prospectus uh, shows what we, you know, we like, we cannot go out there and say, you're going to make this much money. Uh, right. You know, it's there. We, there's, there's certain things we can and can't do. And if, if people are interested, we send out what's, what's called a franchise disclosure doc, franchise disclosure doc. Uh, they've got to look at, they get two weeks to go review it. It gives them all kinds of background information on myself, my background, what I've done, my partner, Chris, what we've done, what we've created. Mm -hmm. what we're really offering because we got to try, we got three levels to come in at and we can't even talk to them for two weeks at that point. Once we give them the doc, mm -hmm. it is now their time to go do due, due diligence. Uh -huh. And then when they come on board, they say they want, they want in, you know, we get, we get the check, we get moving, we start building their website. We start building their marketing stuff for them. We've got all that. We want them to host their first event in 60 days. So we really want them to get going, want them to start, you know, pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. Because it's, it's really cool is when people do see the brand, they they get that, ooh, what is that? Yeah. You know, you know it, it is, it is, what is that? And, you know, it, it, we're hoping this year, we also own everything for whiteboards and wine as well. Oh, I love we figured that. somebody yeah. would steal it. So we just yeah. went and bought it <laughs> <laughs> and we threw it under our trademark. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, because we we did. We went we got everything trademarked and it's mm-hmm. there. We've actually had to shut down somebody that tried to run a whiteboards and wine. And we tried to uh recruit this person to us and she was not very friendly. And so we went to Eventbrite and said, here, well, here's our trademark. She's violating our trademark. And actually Eventbrite shut her down mm-hmm. and, and and took her off, you know, just knew that, that we had to do what we did. But we think we've done the right thing. You know, we went in and protected ourselves. Mm-hmm. We're trying to protect our our franchisees and we're trying to protect the whole brand mm-hmm. because the accountable boardroom, uh, that is actually trademarked over in Australia. Mm-hmm. And we're bringing we're, we're, we're transferring the trademark over to the United States as well. So, so when somebody buys into your franchise, they're getting that whole thing. They're getting the accountable boardroom, all of that. Um, if they would like it, that's the upsell. Oh, oh I see. Okay. <laughs> so the so upsell, that's additional. Okay. That could be additional. Yeah. They could come right okay. in and say, Hey, look, I work for XYZ coaching company. I've got something cool going on now. We just okay. want to verify that they have a real program to put them in. And they can come in and just say, Hey, look, I just want whiteboards and whiskey. Gotcha. That's it. Okay. But what we're finding out is almost all of them want the accountable boardroom too. So that's kind of an upsell because yeah. it's easy. It's simple. It's, it's, it's there. We've got the whole, um, the whole year mapped out on what to do. And we mm. teamed with uh, 90.io. Which- hey, it's Ann here. And I'm sorry to interrupt, but I have to ask you, would you like to level up and scale up your coaching or consulting business and go into that half a million dollars, million dollars or beyond, maybe even in the next year? Well, if it's a big yes for you, then I want to invite you to apply to my next free two-day virtual event. You do not want to miss this. These are the same strategies I use in my business and the same strategies I teach my high-paying clients so that they can have explosive growth and do it with a premium business. So go apply now because I have had people make money right out of my free workshops. All you need to do is go to Expert in You Workshop dot com apply to attend and i'll see you on the inside now back to the show but what we're finding out is almost all of them want the accountable boardroom too so that's kind of an upsell because yeah. it's easy it's simple it's 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 there we've got the whole um the whole year mapped out on what mm-hmm. to do and we've mm-hmm. teamed with uh, 90.io which is a software company that developed all the the dashboards for the the um traction type people mm-hmm. that, that that ran the EOS and mm-hmm. so we we've used their um they've helped us white label their product and we've tailored it to a combination of the whiteboards and whiskey mm-hmm. stuff in the accountable boardroom so we can use that tool so you know we've got that going we've um, teamed with Insperity. Uh, which is a major PEO here in mm-hmm. Houston. They're starting to sponsor our events. Uh, we've got a, a really nice steakhouse that we're in the uh, final, hopefully next, by Friday, we're going to have our agreement done where they're going to start sponsoring our events and we're going to hold them. We may move to the steakhouse mm-hmm. because it's, it's really nice. We can we can jack the price up too to go there. So it's... <laughs> Very cool. So you now that you've you're you have gone basically through this process of setting up a franchise, what's the one tip that you could give to somebody who's maybe thinking about doing this? Um, or what what can you what is the takeaway for them? Document, 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 document everything you do. Um, you know, that's that's the thing that's taken us the longest is putting together our our playbook on how it works. Because as somebody who's coached franchisees in the mm-hmm. past, they're always complaining. And, you know, I'm, co- I'm coaching a couple right now, and it's like, hey, the franchisor doesn't give us this. We don't mm-hmm. have this. We don't need this. You, they're buying a franchise from you because it's they step by step done. System. It's turnkey. It's easy mm-hmm. to easy to do, but you got to document it. And yeah. you know that's what we that's where they the, the real helpful with us with the 90.io folks is we come in and then their software we can go in and we've actually been documenting all our systems. Here's our marketing system. Here's this this this, and then we've gone on and we purchased um, the enterprise level at go high level so we can uh-huh. take care of all the marketing. We just duplicate stuff, uh-huh. and it's very easy for us to go ahead and duplicate and move and get people up and running very quickly. Nice. 
Um, and I, here's the other thing that I, I love, and I hope everyone has picked up on this too. Um, notice how Michael has pulled in a lot of partnerships. So where he where the, he doesn't have the system, he's partnered with someone mm -hmm. where he can white label their system. And this is a huge piece. It's something I talk about all the time, how to scale your business without doing more. It's like, what else do your clients need? And, and whether that's a program or, or what you're doing, a franchise, mm -hmm. that is a great way to scale your business without you having to put out more energy, more effort, even more time. And then you're also providing everything those clients need. So you mm -hmm. become a very valuable resource. Mm -hmm. So I love that you have pulled all that in too, Michael. Yeah, we're, we're still looking for more. We've actually been talking to some whiskey companies and some We've got we've got a guy that ran events at the Super Bowl that really he wanted us to come to the Super Bowl and go to some some whiskey and cigar parties, and I just couldn't justify the cash at the last minute. Yeah, you know, it was, it was going to cost me a thousand dollars a night to stay in, yeah. stay in a hotel, and uh, but we're going to try to do some events here, and we're looking to team up with like the the Texas Whiskey Festival. There's a lot of places that we're going and, and doing things just to get our name out. Uh -huh. and, and get people to see us in a different light. But we've had to really look at that because we were going to sponsor things like the Texas Whiskey Festival. But when we really got talking to the guy that runs it, he goes, you're going to see too many just whiskey drinkers that aren't That's the business That's what I was going to say. Is that, that where your ideal clients are? Yeah, they, they, yeah, some of them, some of them in the VIP. We were, we were thinking about sponsoring a VIP tent, which is like $500 to get in. So we're, we were looking at that. Some of it, but... We actually, what we, we've done is we've actually got to know some of the distillers mm -hmm. in Texas. And so we're, we're thinking about helping them put together a, um, an accountable boardroom for them mm -hmm. and come in and talk and hear, here's where I'm struggling. Here's why I'm struggling. Because I didn't really understand that, you know, everybody's like, it's into whiskey has heard of the bourbon trail that's out in, in Louisville. I didn't know there was one here in Texas. There, there, there is a whiskey trail in Texas that goes from like Austin down to the border. I'm sorry, from Dallas down through Austin to the border. And so as I got into this and just started meeting people, we just started finding new things, new things, new things. Mm -hmm. And it's just interesting because especially when we start talking to potential franchisees, they come up with like really cool ideas that we hadn't even thought of yet. Like, oh yeah, we could do that. Or, yeah. You yeah. know, and, and that's well, there's why always, we, there's unlimited opportunities oh, yeah. for how you yeah. can utilize it and how you can build it and mm -hmm. all of that. So I love it. What are the steps if someone wanted to start a franchise, Michael? What are the steps that they would have to go through? First, you have yeah. to have a proven concept. Yep, you got to have a proven concept. You had to go test. You know, you really got to go test it out. Spend some time beta testing it and collecting the data to make sure that the data really jives. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, figure out a way to get people excited. That's mm -hmm. right now. That's the whole thing that we're focusing on now. It's almost it's, like pre-sell it. I say that yeah. all the time. If you're yeah. building out a program, yeah. pre-sell it. Yes. Yeah. It's everything now is excitement. We're just trying to push excitement, excitement, excitement on the, on the franchisees. You know, we're just getting those, you know, we haven't sold our first one. Our first one we hope to have sold by the end of the month. We've got three uh, uh, NDAs or, um, FDDs out right now. So we've got people looking at them and it's, you know, when you're asking people to, to, to drop a big chunk of money, they do spend a little bit of time, you know, in there. And I think sure. you really got to go research your competition because that's where we spent a lot of time looking at our competition, who they were, what, um, how people who have been in the franchises that have left, we went and interviewed, why'd you leave? What didn't mm -hmm. you get? Mm -hmm. what did you what did you like and yeah. so we were able to go ahead and, and do that you know i i was in you know i worked for one of the mastermind ones and my big issue was they never helped me find clients but what they, they just kept bringing in more competition into my right my right you were, you were like, competing against everybody crap. yes yeah actually most a lot of the companies are like that where you're actually building your own competition yeah and that makes it really difficult but a lot of them are like that so yeah we we've gone in and what we, our focus when we came out we talked to people Ian is our focus was to set them up in NFL cities because mm -hmm. the NFL went to these mm -hmm. cities because there was enough business there to support the National Football League 
Uh-huh. And so what we we looked at it and we said for every 1.5 million in revenue in in uh, population we could have a franchise. Mm-hmm. So like here in Houston we could probably run four or five of them. Uh-huh. And you know me I know Houston well enough I know people from the north are not going to come down to Central Houston at six o'clock. Right. It ain't right. going to happen. Right. So I'm not competing. Actually, the first guy that we're looking to sell to now is in North Houston. And he's like, yeah, I, I know they're not going to come. So right. you know, we, could, we could go to Chicago and we could run three or four there. We could go to mm-hmm. Detroit, run four or five there, Miami, four or five there. So mm-hmm. we don't want to do that because that, that what is what I felt was the biggest thing that people were saying is I bought into this. Now all of a sudden I turn around, there's 15 other people doing the exact same thing. Exactly. And you and I have both been part of an organization that did that. And so now, and you've been, you have actually, because I kind of know your backstory, Michael, Mm -hmm. you've been part of actually a few different, both licenses and franchisors. Mm -hmm. And you've been, you, so you come with a lot of that in-depth experience Mm -hmm. and which is great because now you get to take the problems that you saw, the things that didn't work, the things that could have been done better, and you get to make what you're doing even better. So Mm -hmm. that's such a, that is such a plus and such a win-win for people. Yeah, Yeah. we're we're excited. And, you know, we're getting approached, you know, we've we've got a guy that wants to go to Spain with, Mm -hmm. you know, whiteboards and wine. We've got, you know, being the whiskey, we've met some people that want to take it to um, the UK. That's cool. So, you know, we've already got things running in Australia. Uh, We we beta tested in four markets here in the States. And, Mm -hmm. you know, two of the people have stayed. We, We decided the other two were they just they didn't listen to us you know if i just liked whiskey i could buy into this but i yeah you got the wine like you, got, you got the wine yeah. there is the wine uh, there there we go we got no, this is great this is great i love what you're doing um so good so michael how can people get because i really want to respect your time and this has been so good how can people get a hold of you and find out more about this of course he's on linkedin and you can see his banner and by the way i love the branding i think it's very great i think it's great yeah we should so, put it up in, in my background yeah uh, there you go yeah i've got it i didn't even think about even putting them up um but yeah they can they can reach out to me by phone at 713-201-5559 or they can e- reach out to me via email as Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L, at the letter W, the letter B, whiskey, W, Don't worry, W-B-N, we'll put his link in the show notes. W-B-N, so whiteboard, and it, it is not and, it's whiteboard and whiskey, uh, because we couldn't get the Anna stand, and we tried to get the, <laughs> we tried to get the website, uh, so it's W-B-N whiskey, and the, there is an E in the whiskey, there's reasons why there's E's in some whiskeys and whatnot in others, uh, oh. that's on our blog page, uh, so yeah, we take care of a lot of that, and so it's, it's, it's there, so. Okay, great. So we'll put all those links in the show notes. So yeah. Um, All right. Well, reach out to Michael, if you would like a franchise opportunity to build a business, you know, to to build your business, if you're a coach, this could probably work well for consultants as well. Um, It really anybody in the professional space. I mean, it could work for CPAs, it could work for anyone that is selling some kind of professional services. Yeah, because you're up there, you're on that, you're on that whiteboard, right? And and you're controlling the room, and that's really what gets you there. We've we've done events for fractional CFOs, law firms, nice. financial yes. services. Companies. Yeah, it's not limited. So, no. um, but if you're looking for a live kind of lead generation strategy, I think it's, uh, I think it's really cool. And yeah, it's. I just I think you're. I think it's very innovative, Michael, and I love it. And sometimes things find us, right? So as right. you start to do something, you don't realize how that's going to going mm-hmm. to really take off and what's going to really happen. So super cool. Congratulations Thanks, for man. doing, yeah, for getting into this. I think it's really fun. Um, yeah, my wheels are turning too. So <laughs> FYI, <laughs> always looking for investments. All <laughs> right, Michael, thank you so much for being here. It's been a pleasure. Well, and thanks, as man. always, been, I always love talking to you. Too long since we've seen each other and looking forward it to seeing you really been. soon. I know. So, all right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Expert in You podcast. Make sure you share this with someone that uh, would love to get these takeaways and and really get the value or might even be interested 
in uh, what Michael is offering. And I would I would love to make sure that you connect and, and actually subscribe to the show. So if you've enjoyed this show, then I want to invite you to check out a free automated webinar where I show you how you can bring in ultra high fee clients for $25,000 to $125,000 or even more. I show you how you can do this maybe even in the next seven to 60 days. So if you want to check out that free webinar, just go to X expert in you, accelerator.com. And I'll see you on the inside. You have an amazing day. And until next time, God bless you. Go rock your business.